what are some soft tissue recovery strategies or techniques that I can use to address some of my chronically tight or tender areas? Good question. Mm. A couple things that come to mind. One would be trigger point therapy. There's a thing called the Theracane. Have you seen it? It's the uh, uh, green yeah. cane. It has a little hook on it and little knobs. <laughs> it's like a medieval torture device. So it can oh, be yeah. self in, self applied. Um, and if you have tender spots, let's say in your upper traps or in your low back or your forearms or shoulders, you can use this Theracane and create a uh, pressure for like 30 to 90 seconds. And then that trigger point will release. So trigger point, think of tight muscle spasming. Usually with a trigger point, it's, it's palpable. So you can feel it. It feels like a little knot. It's generally within a band of tissue and there may be some referred pain as well. So let's talk about your upper traps as an example. Yeah. You know, a lot of times people have like a knot in their upper trap and sometimes if they push on it, it goes up into their head or it can go down into their arm. So um, I like the the trigger point or the Theracane for that type of self-applied therapy. Yeah, what's going on with that? Like what is, what is actually happening? I mean, what you said was there, you know, you put pressure on it and it effectively gets the, this thing. Not to relax. Not. Your- it's a quote unquote not. Mm-hmm. I want to be careful about this. To release. What are we mm-hmm. What's really going on there? There's a chan- change in sensory feedback yeah. of the specific area. So, so I think we're, so. Where I was going with this is like a lot of people think like oh, let's go back to foam rollers and lacrosse balls. The Thera guns too. Yeah. I think that's a huge mm-hmm. one. Thera guns. Another gun. one too. I'm glad you brought that up. I yeah. just talked to Cece about that one the, the, the other day. Like, what's really going on with this stuff? So, people don't talk about lacrosse balls quite the same as they did a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And certainly, the foam roller is kind of. Um, while I believe there's application for it, like it's sort of lost favor in a lot of, in a lot of ways too. Um, and then the, but enter the Theragun, which is a way cooler device. And yeah. by the way, it feels fucking great. It does. Yeah. So way better than a lacrosse ball or a foam roller, yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. So I think, you know, like there's all these things. So what's going on? You, what you mentioned is, is essentially what you're doing is you're interrupting the feedback mechanism. Feedback that, loop. Yeah. The feedback loop by putting pressure and getting it to shut down, almost kind of wearing out the the signaling uh, system, if you will, like it, it 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 it's fired on or it's switched on and it's sending this signal and by putting this pressure on it and almost kind of hot wiring that, you're shutting down that signal and so it desensitizes, right? And so it desensitizes it, and it actually gets to relax a it, little bit and it can relax the tissue around there. So, are we remodeling tissue no. with no. a lacrosse ball, a no. theragun, or anything else? Remodeling no. meaning changing fiber direction uh, and breaking down this collagen matrix as we've heard it referred to in the in the past or whatever within the fascia or anything like that. Is any of that happening? No. With that, no. 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 None, that is not. The tonnage there, of force to there, do that. Is there right. is a caveat to, you know, using the therapy or doing trigger point therapy, self-applied trigger point therapy. And that is you also have to address the root cause. Right. So, yeah. so, so that's the next thing. So what you've yeah. gotten, and I think this is the question is, is like the relief, the immediate mm-hmm. relief. And I think when does this stuff come up? We're not talking about like an acute injury, right? Yeah. Like a muscle strain or pull, if you want to refer to it as that or anything like that. What we're talking about is like generally something that's like acute in the sense that it's like from overtraining, overuse. overuse. Like if you're an athlete that's training every day, these things are going to happen. These yeah. are normal things. I don't care what kind of mobility work you do, warming up, cooling down, fucking ice baths, Epsom salts, all that stuff, massage therapy, you're going to have stuff. So we're talking about gaining some relief to maybe get you a little bit more comfortable also get you back into the, you know, the next training uh, a session because yeah. maybe it's just in a couple of hours, right? So what can I do to kind of just get this thing to calm down a little bit and feel a little bit better? Mm-hmm. That could be part of it. But the other part is, is like more, more, the thing we should be asking is like, why is this happening? Yeah. Right. Why is this happening? And if it's just simply a, if it's a result of, I have this very intense training schedule and there's, I just can't mm-hmm. come out of it. Like it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, then that is what it is. So how do we find some comfort in which case? Theracane, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the Theragun, maybe that's the, that's the answer. It just kind of gets you through. Yeah. But 
at some point, we're going to need to relax on this and maybe not train as much and or address the root. Mm -hmm. root So the root cause, whether that's, you know, biomechanics or maybe it's just some load management for a while. Yeah, training volume in general, yeah. Yeah. Or active rest. Yeah, Yeah. so you start to adjust the variables a little bit differently and and, and be okay maybe taking a little weight off the bar. Especially if this is like a reoccurring issue, I think Mm -hmm. that's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is this, yeah, is this something that's just come up or is this something that's been chronic for a while? And I think the way the question was posed is like my kind of like my chronically sore or, you know, uncomfortable areas. Yeah, or chronically tight and tender. Yeah, yeah. So I would just, you know, I would, I would think about that, but I, but I also understand, look, like if you're going at it, if you're one of those people super driven and working out hard and whatever, like this stuff happens and there is a time and a place for some of those, those modalities. Well, and, and I think, you know, so again, why, yes, there are these modalities that can um, be really effective. We talked about why is this continuing to happen, especially if it's like a, a chronic issue of this specific area. Um, so I think that's also assessing like your mechanics, your movement. But one of the actually aspects I like of this trigger therapy for that's really important for recovery in general is if it gets you to fucking chill out. Yeah, That's what you need to do. So yeah. if this is relaxing, if it feels good, that's probably the biggest benefit of the gun or the massage Great or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's getting you to chill. It's allowing your body to recover. Um, another, another important aspect that I really like like when I have someone use this kind of modality, whether it's pre-exercise, post-exercise recovery at home, is doing some movement after you use mm-hmm. these trigger point therapies, mm-hmm. right? You So it's allowed some more range of motion. Maybe it allows you to increase tap into something, flow. increase blood flow, all these different things. So maybe it's a time to work some of your asymmetries or comp- uh, compensatory uh, patterns um, to you know work on some things that, that could be the cause of why this is chronically getting tight. Or honestly, even just move. Just going for a walk after right. you do it. Just help clear some of the more of that, those waste products that are built up in that um, kind of driven tension. So. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. Like if you go and see a good uh, like manual therapist, uh-huh. or like even a chiropractor. And we, we were actually having this conversation the other day via text, Ryan's like, yeah. we were trying to figure out the podcast schedule actually yeah, yeah. this week. And like, oh, I'm going to go see Dr. Mark, who's the Cairo, yes. you know, or whatever. And then, but I, and I can zip back and I can be, you know, we can be back in there. I'm like, I don't want to sit down. Let's think about this. Like, <laughs> the reason you're going to see Mark is to unfuck yourself, right? Yes. But it's it's also to maybe help gain some mobility or or re a realignment or adjustment of some something that's going on, right? And we don't have to get into the personal stuff there. But the point of that is, is like to rush from that to go right back to your car to sitting down into you know a not unnatural position, or well, unnatural being like probably not optimal, whatever the fuck that means. But then to rush back here to sit in that uncomfortable chair over that stool over there for another hour or two, probably not the best way to um, to go about getting that treatment to un- to fix whatever or to aid whatever that issue is. And so I think that's, it's more of the mindset. I think I love what you just said that right there is like, if I go like going back to Mark, like I know what Mark probably told you is like, I want you to go for a walk. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Literally walk. after immediately after the session, you have get to out, walk, walk yeah, out, don't get in your you car. Yeah. yeah. Go for a walk for 15 minutes, go through that cross, uh, that cross call patterning. Yeah. Right. And, and try and kind of reset the system. Otherwise you can reset it that way or yeah. hopefully Maybe that's it's itself or not, or you can go back and sit down in that very static position and hip flex, knee flex, yeah. you know, forward flex position, you know, all that stuff, and probably ends up undoing any of the the the, the benefit that you got from the time that you spent on the table. So same with the Theragun yeah. or you know the Theracane or lacrosse ball if that's what you want to use or foam roller or whatever else. Those things can be helpful in that sense. Just think about how you apply it. So yeah. uh, great points. What else, Cece? Um, Another technique that I really like is self-applied, quote-unquote, scraping. So taking an instrument-assisted soft tissue um, manipulation manipulation tool and applying that. Why do you... Because this is not relaxing. No. (laughs) Well, you know what? There's a couple different things. So you can use it to help with... um, Break, increasing blood flow yeah, there's kind of and two ways. yeah, yeah uh, breaking down adhesions and stuff like that. Moving like lymph and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. um, and and yes, depending on what's happening, you because you want that a glide and slide mechanic between your fascia and your muscles, right? Yeah. And sometimes your body doesn't have the glide and slide, so this tool can be used to help increase blood flow to the area as well as create more glide and slide between your muscle and your fascia. Um, So, and depending on how much dysfunction there is in the area, you might have some broken capillaries. You do need to be careful with this method because yes, you can go too hard. And I have seen some practitioners Mm -hmm. go too hard to where they create a lot of bruising for an individual, but it is not uncommon to have a little bit. 